Every year, we set aside one week. One week traveled to a new destination to mountain bike as much as we can with our two best friends. In late 2019, we decided that we were ready for something even bigger for our next trip. We set our sights on flying out for a two-week trip to Whistler for the following summer. With flights booked, a house rented, and bike luggage obtained, the only thing that stood between us and party laps down A-Line was a few months in a global pandemic. pandemic. It's a pandemic strain of a virus. It is a pandemic. The coronavirus pandemic. After several months of praying for the Canadian borders to open with no avail, we opted for a trip back to Michigan's Upper Peninsula. And while riding in the BC of the Midwest would suffice for now, we traded A-Line for a different A-Line. And instead of crank it up, we were messing up. Oh, you okay? We quickly began making plans for a Whistler trip the following summer. But what we didn't realize at the time was that this UP trip would be our last trip as a group for quite some time. What you doing over there? The initial plan for going to Whistler in 2020 was one last hurrah. After that, Rachel and I had plans to slow down a bit, buy a house, and start a family. We decided that postponing our dreams of starting a family wasn't worth another bike trip, which meant that 2021 was filled with pregnancy, moving into our first house, and raising a newborn. We thought that maybe there was a slight chance we could sneak in a Whistler trip in late 2022, but after returning from a Bentonville trip earlier on in the year, my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer where we subsequently put our lives on hold to give it everything we had to get her through this. After a rough 12 months filled with surgery, curveballs, treatment, and healing, we determined that in order to get the rest that we needed so badly, we were going to Whistler, no matter what. We made plans with Ange and Lauren, found a two-week window that worked, and headed for the mountains. The night before flying out of Toronto, our hotel canceled our reservations at the last minute, which prompted us to sleep in the parking garage at the airport. Our flight was also delayed five hours after getting through security, but it didn't matter. We were headed to Whistler. Shreddy. Canadians just fall out of the sky here and are super good at biking. There was either Dirt Merchant or A-Line. This is everything I dreamt Canada would be. We didn't just set out to ride some laps in the park. We were on a mission. This trip was four years in the making, and I'd be darned if we didn't end this trip with the slash through every single thing on our to-do list. With nine days of riding in total and five days in the park, we had quite the book of a hit list. We wanted to do some riding in every zone that was open within the park, do some riding in Squamish, hike the Chief, find the best poutine that Canada has to offer, and if we were lucky, we really wanted to see a bear. bear! No way! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! As it turns out, bears are about as common as the mountains in Whistler. We have bears back home in Michigan, but they're rarely seen unless you know where to look. We had hoped to see at least one bear on this trip, which was quickly fulfilled on our first trip up the lift. Just walking the trail. We saw bears roaming around the mountain on a decent portion of the lifts up, and even had to pause on a few runs to admire God's creations. We also had to quickly get back to riding when they started coming our way. He's running at you. Yeah. Oh my gosh, he is. He is coming down though, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Both Rachel and Angel hit the thing. It was in the trail when you passed it, wasn't it? What if I would have hit it? It was. As the days in the park went on, we were making quick work of our hit list. 
quickly progressing to bigger trails and getting to experience what each of the zones had to offer. Yeah! You ever have so much fun on a trail you audibly laugh to yourself while riding? <laughs> Imagine riding down the trail and stopping for a break. What you think? It's easy. The Garbo Zone was still in pre-season conditions, and the thick cloud cover kept things interesting. No fear of lock riding foggy, muddy <laughs> trails. <laughs> Yeah, the tree's not, but I am. I just broke my dropper. Well, at least you don't need that here. Good thing I carry zip ties. Come up here and just roll the whole thing, or you can gap it from down there. Yeah! Yeah! Over on Creekside, they had just finished building a bunch of new trails and reworking some old ones. Because this side of the mountain only opened the prior weekend, everything over here was still pretty soft. But despite them running a little slow, these trails are nothing short of downhill roller coasters. On the other hand, Blue Washboard, or more commonly known as Blue Velvet, was the roughest trail that I've ever ridden. It's not even fun with how bumpy it is. Yeah, it's just non-stop. This was a bit saddening because of the hype around this trail, but I think the reason for why it's so rough is that everybody rides this trail, ranging in speeds from beginner to park rat. And I think this eats away at surfaces on these super popular trails. And while this was a bit of a letdown, a pleasant surprise was the level of green and blue tech that Whistler has to offer. Back home in Michigan, we get a little bit of blue tech up in the Upper Peninsula, but I didn't even know green tech was a thing. Yeah. 
It's understandable why the fifth Zenon zone is the most popular area within Whistler. Nice, right? It houses trails like A-Line, Crank It Up, and Dirt Merchant. Take a picture with Dirt Merch, drop it into Easy Does It. <laughs> and has a trail variety ranging from Easy Does It all the way up to Fade to Black. That speed felt good. I think I might go for it. Lord, keep me safe. Let me know if this is it. Dropping. You got this. Woo! Woo! Oh my gosh, that was scary. a week's worth of riding in the park, we neared the end of our trip with a few things on our to-do list unchecked. Some to no fault of our own, like top of the world remaining closed for a few more weeks, and others due to underestimating how big some of the trails are here. But we checked off a few things that I didn't think we would get to. Thanks man. Does it make the sound in real life? <laughs> this trip was so much more than just a bike trip out west. Yeah, right? It signified the end of a never-ending uphill battle to take this trip with their best friends. It was also a celebration of five years of marriage with my wife and revisiting many of the places that we explored here on our honeymoon. This is the trail that gave you your confidence and then the trail that's given it back to you. Yeah, right? Best trail of my life. Being able to ride here together, Seeing Rach do so well literally after finishing her cancer treatment just days before flying out here was nothing short of amazing. And as for those unchecked lines on the to-do list, it's all more reason to come back in the future.